Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, topic I want to talk about today is obesogens. Uh, kind of sounds like a made-up name, but it's actually a legit name being used in some scientific circles. Uh, it's also a term you're probably going to be hearing more of in the future. Uh, so I want to uh, get that out early. I hope to maybe uh, stop people from getting too uh, crazy because some people are going to grab onto this concept of obesogens and are going to run with it to uh, sell products and make videos to, you know, uh, really scare the hell out of people and so forth. So, uh, obesogens are basically just a collective term for a number of chemicals that are found in, in low, very low amounts, minute amounts, um, in our environment. They're man-made. They, of course, can come from a variety of sources such as plastics, uh, insecticides, and so forth. And so, what they are collectively calling them is obesogens. And some of them work as uh, hormone disruptors or endocrine disruptors. Some work through other mechanisms. Uh, there's fairly compelling data with animals that feeding animals some of these chemicals does uh, lead to obesity. And there is some interesting human data, but it's not, it's far from conclusive. And so if any again buddy is going to again go off the handle and start writing articles about the evils of obesogens and all that, uh, again, you got to take that with a grain of salt. So the reality is the, the human data, there really is no direct human data, there is some indirect suggestive human data. Uh, the reality is we are all of us basically are exposed to very small amounts of these chemicals and uh, by and large we're probably fine. Uh, re people don't like to hear that because people live very much in a, in a often a black and white uh, world and that's just not the way it works. The reality is that as said in science and said in medicine the dose makes the poison and the reality is that there's an awful lot of things that we are exposed to in minute doses all the time that in high enough doses are toxic or poisonous or dangerous, and some of them are natural, quote-unquote natural, because there's really, that's another term that kind of has no use, but anyway. So you have to take some of this with a grain of salt, but however, that doesn't mean you should dismiss these chemicals. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is that, you know, you might be uh, exposed to a minute amount of one, and then a minute amount of another, and so on and so forth, and it becomes cumulative. And so, at the end of the day, the load, the total exposure to some of them might be higher than they should be. So that is something to take into account that's very difficult to actually test, at least in humans. Again, you can do it in animals, but in humans that's pretty difficult. So, you know, the sort of take home here is that there are a fair amount of things we can do to reduce our exposure to these chemicals, uh, and there's almost nothing you can do to eliminate them, and sort of living in, a, in some sort of a uh, bubble or a clean room or something. So I, what I am going to do is uh, an excellent article just came out from uh, the scientists, and I will link to that, and you can basically get to it by clicking over here and you'll be able to link through to read. So if you want all the details and want to get into some, you know, a long, lengthy, uh, excellent article on obesogens, that's probably a, the, the article to read that really gets into the nitty-gritty without going in hysteria, without uh, overstating the issue. So obesogens are probably, say, a, a term you're probably going to hear more of in the future. Uh, I wouldn't freak out over it. And don't don't make any mistake the primary obesogen in most people's lives is the food they eat and the excess calories they take in so uh, you, you know most people are not having problems losing weight or are gaining weight because of you know these chemicals in their diet that does not mean however it may not be a contributing factor to some people uh, having a high exposure of some of these chemicals again we don't really know but uh, just wanted to let you in on a term you're going to be hearing. Don't freak out. Uh, address you know the issue where you can and move on with your life. And I hope that info helps. And uh, see you all on the Brink Zone.